Hey guys, Jessica Henry here, um, just down here by the water. This is um, Lake McDonald. I'm in Glacier National Park in Montana, and I'm working on this. Gonna do a plein air of this gorgeous scene. I'm very excited to do this. I just have an 8x10 canvas here, and it's. I did kind of put a little bit of a tone on it, but just left it off. Um, I'm gonna jump right in, and I won't be talking, so I'll do a voiceover during the video. All right, thanks guys. All right, well, I wanted to welcome you to my video here and uh, just tell you what I have going on. I, um, I'm just doing the, the lay-in here. I um, gave myself a horizon line. Wanted to make sure that the mountains had their um, appropriate space for them. And uh, I'm giving them about one third of importance in the painting. Just wanted to make sure that they were, they were had enough scale and size and importance. And I'm actually taking my brush there and checking to see that the mountains are properly in line with each other. One was a little bit taller and so painted it that way. Just laying in the drawing, I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and some gamsol just to thin it down, odorless mineral spirits. Just drawing them all in place. Making sure everything has a proper amount of size and space, level of importance. I have to apologize a bit, the, the lighting on the canvas here is not very good, and I realized that after a little while, so I switched my camera to the other side, and the lighting is much better from over there. But for a little while here, I wasn't aware of it, so it's a little bit dark, but I fixed the problem. All right, just laying in the values and getting those placements figured out where I want everything to go. And I figured that those trees over there would be my darkest value. So once I get the, everything in place, I begin with the background furthest back. In this case, it's the sky and I'm using some ultramarine blue. I did have a little bit of cobalt violet mixed with some white for that. Laying it in, um, leaving some empty spaces for the clouds, so now I'm painting the clouds in those passages. Just white and a little tiny bit of cadmium yellow pale for that. Thinking clouds, soft, light, airy while I'm painting, and it kind of helps with my brushwork just to create that feeling. So I'm just kind of wrapping up the whole passage there with the clouds and creating that soft, feathery feeling. And I will take my brush and just kind of wipe it off every now and then. Towards the range, as the sky went down towards the mountains, I did add a little bit of phthalo green into the blue and white just to make it look um, a little warmer. So I added a few shots with these beautiful scenery uh, around Glacier National Park. Thought it was interesting. <laughs> Alright, so here I am starting the mountain again and um, oh, I'm, I just I feel awful about the lighting on the canvas and I do change it here really soon. Um, but I'm just using a burnt sienna, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue with white and different variations and variables of that combination. 
obviously as I go further away from us, I added more blue and white just to get it having that look of uh, being more atmospheric. And so that's, that's just what I'm working on in here, allowing my brush stroke to define the form and the sculpturalness of the mountain. It was very important to me that it, my concept here was that the mountain felt majestic and solid. And so I wanted my brush strokes to really reflect that. Here I'm laying down a value for the mountain that's a little bit closer to us, and I'm just keeping it um, fairly dark, but I think I go back through there and kind of lighten it a little bit because I thought it was a little, little bit too dark. So that's what I'm working on in there. Just using the same color combinations. I can get a really nice, strong dark using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. That is Avalanche Lake. I went up there yesterday. And there were all these beautiful creeks and rivers on the way up. It's about a two mile hike, two and a half mile hike up. Okay, so here I changed the location of my camera and I think it really helps a lot. <laughs> you can finally see um, just some of the textural elements of the mountains. and I'm laying in some of those little tiny spots of snow that I felt really helped and added a lot to the composition. And that's just white with a little bit of cadmium yellow. Just laying down soft little pieces of snow. I always wanted to paint snow-capped mountains. Although they weren't really snow-capped, at least I had a little bit of snow. <laughs> I was happy. I'm taking the sky here and helping to sculpt out and redefine the shape of the mountain. I'm trying to keep everything very angular and strong, confident brush strokes and angled lines. And so now I'm working on the foreground passage of this, I guess it's a foothill, using um, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow pale, making this mountain here that's closer to us a little darker. By adding just that line of dark, it really pushes the other mountains back, which I appreciate and really like that effect. That is just ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Work on that distant hill back there too. So here I am just laying down more of a value tone for this mountain. I did add a little bit more alizarin crimson into the ultramarine blue mixture just to kind of make it a little bit more violet and atmospheric in there. And I, I added a little bit of yellow ochre to, to sort of give it the sense that it's closer by warming it up and it um, adds a little bit of richness to it. There's the scene. And I love this passage here where this dark comes down and then it goes up that foothill and has this beautiful value gradation from dark going up to the pretty green on the right hand side. Like that. that it, that passage there I just thought was very lovely. It's really pretty out there. Just 
just working on the trees, the pine trees. When I do pines, I, I like to start with the darker value. This is still part of the hillside, but I'm using a vertical brush stroke just to kind of suggest trees back in there. So I'll get a darker tone here, and I, it's kind of the base that I use for doing pine trees. It's just um, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna to make it darker and richer. So I go with that dark tone. Oh, look at the trees. <laughs> Such pretty trees. Look at these greens. This was right up there by Avalanche Lake. So beautiful. So I got this, these dark pine trees, and then into those and around those, I will lighten them up a little bit. But it provides a nice strong anchor to that area. Adding that crisp, strong shoreline. And then I'm pulling those trees down into the water as I'm starting to focus on doing more water down there. Uh, one thing I noticed is that um, I didn't have, it wasn't as cool back there as I wanted, so I was kind of softening that and making those distant trees a little bit more sage color. And I think it, by doing that, just kind of pushed it back a little further, which it, it needed. They were too warm, which was competing with the warmth of the green up front, and it didn't have that illusion of going further back in the distance. And that's just what I'm working on there. Kind of cooling that down a little bit too. <clears throat> I noticed that as the light changed and shifted that some of that atmosphere uh, was kind of flowing in there a little bit more and I liked that. You could see this soft blue, so I'm, I don't know, not mist or something. It was just beautiful. Like the mountains were sort of floating. So I put that in. It's just blue and white. And, and it's a brush, tro brush stroke technique called scumbling, where you just do a light, soft, sort of dragging the brush over. And then I'm just adding in some of the sun hitting those trees back in there. Okay, so I'm starting to put in some of those greens into the water, and when you're doing water reflections, you just um, you paint them a little bit darker than the color that is being reflected. So to get water really to have that illusion of it being water, it, you just start with a crisp shoreline, and then you use vertical brush strokes, and um, just gently paint those straight down and then you'll see in a little bit here I glaze sort of a sparkle up going across the surface and it really has that look of being watered. So I'm just taking some of those darker green tones, a little darker than what's above it, just pulling them down into the water. Still the same brush that I've been using this whole painting. You can pack pretty light. <laughs> On that side, I'm just going with a little bit darker than the mountain. Um, ultramarine blue. A little, I actually, I used a little bit of alizarin crimson in there too. Same thing with this side. It was such a beautiful scene. I, I just really liked um, how it just compositionally created this path for you to come into the picture 
A lot of people do a path or a road or, or um, I don't know, a river or something that leads into the painting, but I thought that having this, the sky passage of these mountains be the lead in an invitation to come into the painting was really interesting and made a unique composition. And then of course those clouds sipping off, so pretty. It's really a scene that if you had a really big canvas out there plein air, you could just, it seemed like it called for a big canvas. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll do a big one plein air. <laughs> Alright, so I'm still just working on the water and laying down just the values and colors that I see reflective above it, but a, just a shade darker. on there, using horizontal strokes. This was um, on the way into the park, and this was the same scene I'm painting just earlier in the day and a little up the road. Is further back there I am using I'm using more of those horizontal strokes to lay those mountains in So back in there, I'm just working on a little little patch of sunlight um, hitting that far away. You can see it there in the picture. Um, back there in the distance, it really added a lot to sort of frame in right there, that passage. Without it, that became just sort of a quiet, dead spot, I thought, anyway. And by adding just that little bit of sagey green to that hill, just sort of made that passage there come alive and I, I really liked when the sun hit that. I saw that and I said, oh, that's got to go in. <laughs> Cleaning that edge up. Needed that. So I'm, I'm kind of cooling things down a little bit because I noticed that they were they were a little too the value was a little too heavy on those passages so that's what I'm working on right there. I'm laying in a little bit of that shoreline reflection. That by doing this brush stroke here like this, that helps give it a crisper edge to that shoreline back there, and um, also get, really creates that illusion of water surface. And then this lake is famous for this beautiful turquoise aqua color and so I was really excited when the wind came across and just rippled the surface and I could see it. I could see that beautiful turquoise so I quickly put that in. It's um, I just used thalo green, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cadmium yellow and then some white using a horizontal stroke glazed over the top of those vertical strokes is really cool. For a little while here, um, I'm not going to talk, but it's just, it's, you can see I'm just working on smaller aspects and details of water. I'll be putting in the sky here in the water, which is, um, right there, just a little darker than what's above it, um, white, cadmium yellow pale, and um, a little ultramarine blue, just keeping it nice and horizontal. When I'm doing these kind of reflections like this, it's to me it, it's not imperative that I go with vertical strokes because it already has that feeling of it looking like ripples if I go horizontal. But where I had those trees over there, 
casting straight down into the water, then yeah, it was important to go with a more vertical brush strokes. Brush strokes do so much to contribute to a painting. Everything that happens at the end of your brush says something about the artist, how you were feeling. and There's so much of that that goes into a painting. It's like having a concept, and, and that is something before you start any painting, you want to have an idea of how you want that canvas to look um, when you're done. Without knowing what you want, you're never going to get it. So in this case, I knew that this painting wasn't going to be so much about light since it was about noon and it wasn't much of a strong light source. So I looked out there and what I saw was this majestic, beautiful mountain and the colors were just stunning. So I wanted to do a painting that really reflected my, just this initial reaction to this whole scene. And um, keeping that in my head as I'm working, you, it's easy to lose sight of what your vision was, but you got to hold on to that. And uh, if you have to have your thumbnail sketch and write notes and keep it out as you're painting just to remind yourself, then you have to do that. At home in my studio, I will have post-it notes on my studio, on my easel, just to help me remember different ideas and things that I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose sight of during the painting process. So in here, I'm just, you can see, I'm just doing little reflections and little subtle details. Hiding. <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful right here. Did I already pass Lake McDonald, like the bottom part of it, to where everyone did a tourist? That's awesome. <laughs> so, in here, I am just popping in a little bit more brilliant color and just making sure that. All those little fine points of the painting get the special care and attention that they need. And here I'm taking a softer, totally dry, clean brush and kind of cleaning up some of those harsher brush strokes where I don't want a crisp, sharp edge. So, and there's reflections down here where they go into the water. I wanted them a little bit softer, and so that's what I'm doing here with this dry brush. Sort of cleaning it up, tightening things up. done with this painting. I had so much fun doing this. It was just, it's so relaxing out there. It's very peaceful. It just makes me so happy to get out and paint. And even happier when I hear from people watching that, you know, that, that they've gone out and tried it for the first time and they enjoyed it and they loved it, they're hooked. That to me is exciting and it's so nice to hear that. I was trying to see it, I'm trying to just popping in some a little bit more brilliant yep, lights back there. That that is obviously <laughs> the focal point of the painting, so I really want to make sure that where it is I want the eye to go that uh, especially in that focal area that it's really beautiful. Beautiful choices, colors, paint, brush strokes, all that. Little bushes getting caught by the sun. Well, this has been a very enjoyable um, painting and demonstration. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed it, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. These are such a pleasure to, to bring to you guys.
I really um, appreciate your comments and feedback. Just, uh, just tightening everything up here, pulling in those sharper accents. All those little tiny details that make a painting come to life. of the forest waterfalls right in that area. And then I'm just popping in a little bit more of that intense bright light over there and sort of cleaning things up over there. Like I said before, that that whole, by just adding that little bit of light really helped that edge over there. All right, well that wraps up my painting here I did um, in Glacier National Park. This is Lake McDonald and um, I had a wonderful time. I hope that this was in some way fun and enjoyable. I wanted to thank you guys for joining me and I hope that this inspires you to go out and paint your own adventure. Alright, thanks so much you guys.